My name is Daniel Imervar. I teach history at Northwestern University. I wrote a book called How to Hide an Empire, but I want to talk to you today about Star Wars, um, particularly the first three films, the original trilogy uh, that George Lucas released uh, starting in the 70s, in 1977. I think it's easy to see Star Wars as pure fantasy. It's got robots, aliens, huge spaceships, and lightsabers. Uh, and for contrast, Here's the state of cutting-edge technology in the United States at the time, around the time that the movies first came out. Uh, the big thing to drop, didn't, it wasn't even out yet when the first Star Wars movie uh, uh, came out, was the Walkman, which is a portable cassette player that you can use to listen to music while jogging. So from that, the Star Wars films are a galaxy far, far away. And, you know, it's tempting to just see them as escapism. But I'm a historian, and we tend to think that things are products of their time, even fantasies. Uh, and my own sense is that Star Wars is as much a film about the 1970s as it is a film about outer space. And the thing you really need to understand to make sense of Star Wars is the Vietnam War, which uh, the United States had just fought, the United States had just lost, and was still really on people's minds. It was particularly on the mind of George Lucas. Uh, he was obsessed with the Vietnam War. In fact, he had worked for years on a film about the war. Uh, he drafted a script, they had scouted locations, and uh, he chopped it around Hollywood, but he couldn't find studios interested to take it because it was a critical film, and the studios at the time weren't interested in releasing films like that. So uh, Lucas gave the film, handed it off to a friend of his, and then started working on another film. Two things about that. Uh, thing one, the film to whom he handed the uh, to the friend to whom he handed the film was Francis Ford Coppola, who made the film, and the film became Apocalypse Now, which is remembered today as one of the finest films uh, the United States has ever produced, uh, and also a withering critique of the Vietnam War. That was the film that George Lucas was working on, and worked on for four years. The film that he started working on instead, uh, he felt comfortable working on because he thought, I can just take my ideas from Apocalypse Now in fact, some of the same scenes, and, and transfer them into this new movie. That new movie was Star Wars. Star Wars was George Lucas's Vietnam War film. How? Right? It's not a film, obviously, about Vietnam. It's not set in Vietnam. Well, I think there are some ways the Vietnam War came up. Uh, the critics of the war tended to criticize it for, um, well, for a lot of things. Um, some criticized it for the uh, heedless uh, destruction of large parts of Asia and the waste of Asian lives. Uh, other people uh, criticized the effect that it was having on the United States, on U.S. service members. Um, George Lucas had a different take. Uh, for him, the, the deep meaning of the war was about technology. He looked at his society, and he thought that he saw a society that had become distorted, warped, perverted by its pursuit of industrial technology. The United States had all of this expensive military hardware, and it seemed to think that with that hardware, it could win the war. But it couldn't. Uh, in fact, all it could do was just carpet bomb large parts of uh, North Vietnam. So uh, Lucas thought that was really the problem. And, and he, he thought, OK, what would this look like if you, if you played this out, right? Uh, what path is the United States on? And in making Star Wars, he was trying to extrapolate, not imagining the United States as it might be you know, five years from now uh, or from then, but imagining a, a far future for it. And the future he imagined was a galactic empire, a galactic empire that had this gleaming, shocking military technology, something that could vaporize whole planets, the Death Star, uh, but nevertheless was completely immoral. That was how Lucas, that was what Lucas was afraid of. Uh, and, and part of Star Wars is, is both playing out that fear, but also trying to imagine how the United States could be put on another path. Uh, and there he looks to the heroes, to people like Luke Skywalker. So um, I want to talk about this clip that we posted, because uh, I think it's a, a really telling and important one. Um, this clip shows Luke Skywalker, the hero. It's in the second film. He shows Luke Skywalker uh, seeking his mentor, Yoda. And he doesn't know who Yoda is, but he knows where Yoda is. So he's gone to Yoda's home, and now he's looking for him. He's met this swamp creature, whom we learn is Yoda. Uh, uh, and, he's, and he's kind of trying to figure out what to do. So uh, a few things about the scene. First of all, the planet, Yoda's home. It's a swamp 
Luke has got his spaceship stuck in it. And for anyone watching the film at the time, uh, they would immediately pick up the resonance of Vietnam, right? Uh, people talked about the Vietnam War as a quagmire, as the sort of ground that sucks you in. And there were photos of, um, you know, U.S. tanks being stuck in the mud. So, so people were, you know, could see that and, and could recognize that some reference was being made to Vietnam. There's something else that you see early in the clip that I also want to draw your attention to, which is Luke's companion, the droid, R2-D2. Um, the heroes in, this, in these films have technology. They have robots and stuff, uh, but their technology always looks a certain way. It's always sort of grease-stained and, and put together, and it's always breaking and they're fixing it. Uh, it's sort of garage technology, secondhand technology, and that's really what R2-D2 looks like, especially in the scene. Um, the villains have a different kind of technology. Their technology is always huge and expensive and, and, and gleaming and spotless. Uh, that's what the Death Star looks like. In fact, there's basically a rule in the Star Wars universe. If you ever see anyone who's got something shiny in their hands, that person is a villain. Uh, so we already see something. This is some kind of about Vietnam. There's something going on with technology. And then we go into Yoda's hut. And Luke still doesn't know uh, who Yoda is. And this is the scene where Yoda reveals who he is and also reveals what he's about. Um, and a few things about that. First of all, Yoda. The, na the name is interesting. Uh, it sounds a little Japanese, and it's not the only name in the Star Wars universe that sounds that way. Obi-Wan Kenobi, the Jedi. Uh, George Lucas was really interested in Japanese films, and he was interested in um, sort of making the Jedi Japanese. In fact, he considered uh, casting Luke and, and, and the other Jedi uh, with Asian actors. Uh, he didn't, but nevertheless, some of the flavor is still there. Uh, so we have a vaguely Asian setting, something that looks a little like Vietnam. We have a vaguely Asian, um, you know, figure uh, in Yoda. And 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 what is Yoda about? This is where Yoda explains his his teachings, or at least starts to. Um, Luke is a headstrong guy who wants to get back in the war and win it. And Yoda's advice to him is, patience, calm yourself. You're not ready still your soul. And if this sounds a little bit like Zen, it is. Uh, George Lucas was really interested in not just Asian cinematography, but in Asian religion and in Zen Buddhism. And he distilled some of that into the character. He was also reading a lot at the time about uh, Native American spirituality through a series of books he was reading. And he, he put a lot of that in Yoda too. And he talked explicitly about doing that. Um, Yoda is, you know, says to Luke, you know, first of all, you look at Yoda's hut and there is no technology in it, right? There, like, there's nothing. There's no gadgets. And Yoda explains that he's been training Jedi for 800 years. And you imagine he's kind of been teaching the same stuff for 800 years. So this is ancient wisdom, not looking into the future hardware or anything like that. That's going to be the source of, of, well, what allows Luke to win. And you realize this is the scene where it all kind of comes together. Uh, Luke is fighting a technological empire, uh, and he's going to line up with this vaguely Asian figure who's um, talking to him about things that are really different from high technology. And you kind of realize that, oh my God, George Lucas is making a Vietnam War film where he's rooting for the Vietnamese. Right, that they're going to take down the empire, which, and Lucas said this explicitly, is the United States. And it's interesting how they're going to do this. Um, Luke is going to fight the empire, confront the empire, and, and you know we're going to root for him as he does. Um, but he's not going to destroy it, blow up its home planet or anything like that. Uh, what Luke, with Yoda's help, is, is going to do uh, is he's going to uh, defeat the empire, but he's going to defeat it in a way that transforms it and turns it back into something that it used to be. So, um, you know, once Luke defeats um, Darth Vader, it will be not, not an empire any longer. It'll be what it used to be, a republic.